Hold the phone. This just in, this just in. Local suburban tween from Jefferson, Indiana posts an infographic onto his Instagram, causing millions of lives to be saved. Uh, yeah, yeah, bro, I'll see you later. <laughs> Covering this story on the ground, we have Eric J. Chang. On to you, Eric. A local Indiana team put it upon themselves to put on the responsibility of changing the world. And in this specific case, the share was Johnny F. Lee, pepperoni lover 69 on Instagram. Monumental. That's right, Eric. And for all the folks at home who don't know what an infographic is, it is an image that has information on it. And the primary purpose is to educate followers and fellow friends about the different issues that people care about. Incredible. And the best part of all of this, Eric, is that young people are really discovering that they don't need to compromise their abilities to be sexy on social media. They can be sexy and politically active. Thank you very much for covering this story, Eric. Up next, local TikToker gets accused of eating entire rat. Turns out it was a cake the whole time. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, and welcome to Group Chat, where we talk about different issues and things that we think are important today. Each of us comes from different cities, backgrounds, cultures, and points of view. I'm a little sweet, a little spicy, but I'm all love. They call me sunshine in human form. <laughs> Beauty doesn't last, but swag is forever. Honey, I'm not dimming my life for anybody. Oh, it's stop. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing that I wanted to talk about with you guys, social media activism. Many people have joined the trend of sharing infographics about various social issues. In a recent adolescent article, writer Sierra Benton says, infographics have become a popular way to disseminate information, but people show their support online, but don't materially contribute to the cause on the front line. So what do you guys think? Is social media posting really a form of activism or protest? You know, I always got something to say. I mean, you know, I appreciate that. I, I believe everybody should be an activist in some kind of way. So I appreciate, you know, the infographics. I think that they get information out quickly um, for people that don't know what's going on. The problem comes in where you do the infographic and then you do nothing else. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that article from Adolescent Content because I actually saw another article that talked about the percentage of people that were going so hard for Black Lives Matter and how the percentage has gone down since June or July because we ain't really talking about it no more but in the black community they absolutely are still talking about it. So I just think that some people was lying. They didn't really support it, they just jumped on a wave. So if your infographics are about jumping on a wave, then we got a problem. Well, I, I, I completely agree with what you said. I think performative activism is like a huge problem, but I also think that posting on social media can be activism to an extent. Sharing resources or like sharing petitions are kind of like on the milder side of the spectrum of activism, if that makes any sense. A lot of people may not have the means to be on the front lines. A lot of people wanted to participate, but were scared because of COVID, which I think is a really valid concern. I think we should just recognize each other's boundaries because there's no one right way to advocate as long as you're you're taking action in parallel to, to the way you're speaking out. I was definitely uh, someone on the front lines. Like I did both the active uh, protesting and I did definitely social media activism as well. With the nature of COVID going on right now, everybody is at home, everybody's on their phone, everybody's on their laptop. So social media activism is at its all time peak. In my opinion, I think it's more effective than uh, actively protesting because people get their feathers ruffled when you, know, you say things on social media because no company wants to look bad or no um, corporation wants to look bad. It's for everyone to see. I think it's so interesting that you say that social media in some ways can be more effective than actually being like out there protesting because it, the fact of the matter is that companies and politicians and people who make change and have power are on social media as well. And I think I hadn't really thought of it that in that way, but I do think that at the same time, something about the term social media activism rubs me the wrong way in that I feel like it encourages like bare minimum politics. And it's like, well, I'm an activist in my everyday life because I like posted this thing. Whereas there are people who are activists and then use social media as a platform and as a vessel. But I feel like when it becomes the product as opposed to the 
the vehicle, I feel like that's where things get a little bit messy. I just think it's important for people to follow it up with something. Informing people is the first step. The next step is deciding what else can be done. For activism, I just believe you use your gifts. What gifts do you have that you can contribute to the movement? And if you're using your gifts, then I ain't mad at you. Do you think that um, that people just post a post or do you think that they actually have like the full details? Because with the media, sometimes we get what we see from one side and not the other. We have to know like what fight are we actually fighting? The way that companies like engage with their platforms right now, they leave it up to us users to determine like what's appropriate and what's not like reporting posts. I kind of like that, at least for some topics, like I don't think that it's necessary for companies to get like as involved. We shouldn't depend on any one social media site for all of our information anyways, if that makes any sense. I think that's hard because I feel like my views have changed. I think in the perfect world, we would all be informed citizens and we'd be able to say, this is fake and this is not, and I know the, the trustworthy news sources that I'm gonna go to, but that doesn't exist. And so people do confirm their biases and people do put stuff out there that is fake and misleading and misinformation and disinformation. And at the end of the day, like I do think it's up to Facebook and Twitter and Instagram to be like, no, that propaganda has to go down. But we're normalizing, changing our views on the day to day, you know? I love that. Like, I don't think that's censorship. But on the flip side of that is, how do we decide whether or not the, comp the companies are ethical enough to tell us what is and what isn't true? That's the space that I'm also in because I know a lot of companies are led by capitalism. I'm, I'm a little anti-capitalism these days just from, from seeing how what it does to my people and what it does to poor people. And I just, it made my stomach hurt. So I'm a little worried about leaving it in the hands of the companies, but then what is our other option? Because there are a lot of people that don't have access to the information so that they are informed. What's the last dumb take you saw on social media? Wow. The dumbest take that I have seen on the internet, I don't know if you all saw this, but it was that video where that that woman threw a puppy at this man. Oh my God, like, uh, it's a puppy. Why? Oh my God. Well, that's something. Well, let's talk about the comment section. Do we think it's a constructive place or do we think this is a toxic environment? Even positive comments that are just like, what is the term? Smoking up person's asshole. <laughs> like, isn't that what, like when you're just flattering someone and just like changing their whole perception of reality of like what is true and what is not, like that's not doing anyone any favors either. Um, first of all, let's just say, I don't believe smoking up someone's ass is the phrase. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I applaud you for trying, Eric. On social media, we're exposed to lots and lots of different perspectives as we just talked about. I'm wondering if you guys have ever blocked or unfollowed somebody that you have disagreed with. I see you guys reacting. I see y'all reacting. In my experience, I, I've kind of mellowed out a bit, but I used to be like really outspoken and a lot of people will come into my dms and try to argue if you're obsessed with me just say it. you don't have to keep coming to my dms but anyways just the fact that everything on on the internet is so like instantaneous it makes it that much easier to engage in those negative emotions that you have while reading something you disagree with that can result in a lot of not getting through to each other disrespecting each other and i had a lot of that so instead of blocking people i kind of i restarted my entire instagram account the bottom line is you don't have to be consuming media that hurts you or stresses you out so i'm a huge fan of the unfollow button but i want to know what y'all think what about you andre you got something to say so one thing that i've really like learned to do is that mute you can mute people on Instagram. There's that feature that you can, you don't have to see their post at all. You just, they go away, they still follow you, but you can mute them, M-U-T-E. So I did get into a little, um, you know, a stiffle with someone and they posted something in regards to like, oh, we're finally getting justice for Breonna Taylor. And I basically said, you need to take this down. This is disrespectful. That person blocked me. But again, that's okay because I mean, I got how I felt out. Blocking is cool if you need to block, but muting is even better because I mean, they can still see your little lavish life, you know, <laughs> on social media. <laughs> like Maya Angelou said, like when people show you who they are, believe, believe them. them, I'm believing you and I'm gonna believe you at a distance. I agree with you. I generally try not to block people because I feel like there is 
something flawed in that kind of behavior where it gets into this conversation of like cancel culture and like, can you actually remove someone from your world? Again, I blocked people and I agree. I think muting is different. Like I've muted some people who I agree with. There's a difference between the person and the social media account. And sometimes they're just annoying. Like even if you agree with someone wholeheartedly, social media is capitalism at heart. It's about growing a following. It's about getting more and it doesn't end. And that leads people astray. I believe in unblocking. I mean, I believe in blocking. Ah! Blocking, I'm blocking whenever I feel, and whenever I please. Um, I also believe in muting. The mute ministry. I just think it's a powerful ministry to be a part of. You don't have to pay no dues. That part. You just show up. And I be muting people because what are you even talking about right now? So I can deal with it if you just have a different opinion. But when you, if your different opinion is that somebody else's life doesn't matter yeah. as much as yours, we ain't got nothing to talk no, about because fact. I can't convince yes. you. Your Absolutely. heart needs to change. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't have divine power to change your heart. I can't do that. So I'm going to leave that up to the powers that be to change your heart. So I'm blocking, especially if you run around acting like COVID ain't going on. I'm blocking you. You gotta go, cause I'm at home. <laughs> Thanks for logging into the group chat. Until next time, TTYL.